developer friends. That's right. Last keynote of the day and of Octane, I guess. Uh, we are thrilled to have so many new things in this Octane 2023, tailor-made with developers in mind. And a whole day tomorrow, of course, dedicated to developers only. So I hope you all are planning for that deep sessions. As developers, you are the innovators who put technology to work. You are crucial and decisive contributors to protecting user identity. You, didn't just, you don't just enhance functionality, you build the very foundation of trust with every user. You are the ones turning complex business use cases and ambitious ideas into simple clicks to delight your users. And Okta's mission is to help everyone to safely use any technology. And developers like yourself are at the heart of that vision. Your passion and dedication inspires us. As it says on the t-shirt, if, if you grab that from the booth downstairs, no matter your stack, we've got your back. Yes. Our commitment remains firm to make sure that your experience is always simpler and faster without sacrificing security. And today we are here to showcase our latest investments and show what is it to come. As you know, the authentication journey starts with user login, which is the first step in securing your application. User identity is key to your application, and with it, you can decide what a user can do and cannot do. But how can you be sure of user's identity? How can you be sure that the user who's trying to access your application is who they say they are? The classic answer to this question is through the login box. The login box is the, is the symbol of user authentication. The username and password combo has become synonymous with user identity verification. And it's been what we have been using for last three decades. From the days of AOL, Yahoo, ICQ, to dialing into your service provider, it is about the time we move past it. Of course, Okta enables you to add the login box to your application with ease. But dealing with user identity is not just about adding the login box to your application. Now you have authenticated, authenticated your user. What's next? Maybe customize the UI of your application based on user attributes. Hopefully that's easy. How about customizing the user, user registration flow based on the business flow? Maybe you need to call some external services now. You know, the complexity starts to grow. And what about your users who are running your application on multiple devices? How do you make it easy for them to switch between devices smoothly? And as you just start to figure that out, now you have to scale your application fast, all while adding features because you have changed the core of your product. As your product reach grows, where do you focus? More features and better performance in the product or securing, scaling, and improving your login box? Feel the tension? And that is at the core of our vision, taking away all that complexity and with that, the complexity when it comes to solving for your login box. And today, let's see how Okta helps you go beyond the login box to, to address those challenges. In this keynote, we will steer into three pivotal, pivotal categories. Develop authentication, which is logging in. Authorization, which is controlling the access for people who logged in. And of course, developer productivity, which is making it easy for you to bring these capabilities to your applications. So let's start kicking things off and see what we are preparing uh, with authentication front, right? So we started with in universal login making it easy to authenticate users with the username and password or using common social identity providers. We made it easy to implement login and sign-up forms with custom data to help you tailor your authentication experience. Now let's take things to the next level with the latest authentication and phishing resistant technology. That's why earlier this year we announced that we are starting our journey to 100% passwordless future. Yes. Passwords alone are not secure to protect your users' identities. 
Not only do our, our end users hate the hassle that passwords bring, but they're also most common attack vector for bad actors. To frame the risk that passwords pose, let's take a look at two numbers here. According to 2023 data breach investigation report by Verizon, 86% of web application breaches involve the use of stolen credentials. Bad actors are adept at using stolen credentials and the personal information they obtain to attack other systems. And over this past year, we observed more than 14% of all login attempts were considered to be credential stuffing attempts. On the day with the highest share of credential stuffing at traffic, we blocked more than 10 million malicious login attempts in one day. To protect your application and our shared customers, we continue to support making security measurements easier, such as multi-factor authentication. And we support WebAuthn to create a new strong, attested, scoped, public key-based credentials. And this week, passkey support has come out of our lab's environment and is available to everyone. Passkeys can and should replace passwords. They are discoverable and can sync across devices, meaning that an application, including your browser, can discover if there's a passkey created for it. And if there is one available, it can show this to the user, which can then use that credential to authenticate securely. So you don't need to get creative, create a new password, clicking on the forgot password link, and of course, change your password only to be told that you can't use the same password. The great thing about passkeys is that credentials are backed up in the cloud and synced to your other devices, enabling you to move between your devices smoothly. But what does this mean for developers? When you switch to passkeys, the transition from passwords will be smooth because they are easy to support along with passwords. It will also increase the developer velocity as you don't have to maintain or debug password-dependent systems, we take care of the complexity behind passkey so you can focus on offering a better user experience. You can now enable your users to use sync passkeys tied to their Apple and Google accounts across multiple devices, providing you seamless experience secured by FIDO phishing-resistant authentication. By removing the need for passwords or shared secrets, attackers cannot intercept them or use stolen credentials. Let's take a look at how authentication with passkeys looks like. And for that, I would like to pass it to our, over to Carla Uria, who's going to give us a demo. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Vavna, for that insightful introduction for passkeys. Now, I want to tell you about this app that I've been building in my spare time, kind of like a side project, and I'm sure most of you have something like that. I already use Altero at work, so I decided to add a universal login book to this app that I called Carla's Journal, because I'm that creative. At this point, we have a basic login box where I put my email, and I'm also going to put my old and complex password that I just created, which <laughs> I can't remember, as usual. <laughs> And I didn't store it in a password manager either. And I cannot tell you how many times this has happened to me. So when I heard about passkeys, I knew I had to try it right away. Alt Zero made it pretty easy for me. All I have to do is go to the management dashboard, and then in the authentication side, go to my database connection. Then in the new authentication methods tab, I will see that I have both passwords and passkeys. And the cool thing is I can have both enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and enable passkeys just by switching this toggle. Now when I go back to my app and I log in, I see that I have a new button, continue with passkey. And I can use it once I register a new passkey for this account. Because I already registered my account with a password, I have to log in with those credentials first. 
And that's okay, because it makes the migration easy, and I actually remember this pass the password this time. Once I log in, the page asks me if I want to register a new passkey. And the cool thing about this passkey that I'm registering is that it will only work for this domain. No other domain will be able to use this passkey. This makes my passkey phishing resistant and guarantees that no one will access my journal by stealing my credentials. It doesn't matter how good you replicate Carla's journal, if the passkey if the website is not that one, the passkey won't work. Now that I have created the passkey, I can use it to authenticate. So here's me, another day of trying to journal. I go to my fancy journal and I click on login. So I'm going to try to do that. And now I see that in the username and field password, I can and the username and email uh, field, I can touch it, and I can see that there's already a passkey suggested for me. I can click that, or the continue with passkey button. And now this is a very cool thing. Because, because passkeys are discoverable credentials, the browser knows already if and which passkey I have created for this website. And I think that's honestly pretty cool, because I don't even have to remember if I have an account created or not for this website. The browser prompts me from my Touch ID to access this passkey, which means I'm adding more than one authentication factor in one step. Because I am using something that I have, that's the passkey, and something that I am, and that's my fingerprint. If you remember, earlier talked about seeing passkeys. And in practice, if I want to log in, let's say, from my iPhone, Okay, if I want to log in, let's say, from my iPhone, I can totally do it by using face recognition. And the cool thing about the passkey is that you can sync it through a cloud-based keychain like Apple's ClientUp. So, and that would make my passkey available in all of the devices that are connected to that same keychain. It honestly, it feels like magic because all I had to do was to switch a toggle and everything was just working. What do you think about that, Bhavna? Bhavna. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> that timing certainly did not work out, but we'll fix that. But thank you, Carla, for walking us through passkeys. Magical indeed, I would say. Uh, it feels great to be moving towards a passwordless future once and for all. If you want to learn more about passkeys, take your phones out and scan this QR code to attend Johannes and Hans's presentation tomorrow in our Dev Day track. And our team uh, at Okta, we are all in. We believe strongly that passwordless authentication is the future. With its increased security, enhanced user experience, its potential for reducing operational costs, and of course, its inherent scalability. And that's why we are happy to announce that every customer identity cloud offering, including our free tier, will support passkeys out of the box. Wow, that's true. That's going to be a big, big thing. And we have talked about the login box and looked at passkeys as a new way of authenticating. But what about bringing in your business needs um, we believe that authentication flow should fit your business needs and not the other way, right? Which means you may need a way to customize the authentication flow, and we offer actions as our solution to extend authentication to help you customize your auth flow in whichever way you want. Our actions are feature complete, so you can bring any use case that you are working on or plan in the future. And the best part of actions is that the most common scenarios we have you, you have is ready-to-use solutions available in our marketplace. So it is likely that you don't even have to write code. Just drag and drop. For example, if you're planning to add capabilities such as identity proofing, biometric MFA, or limit user access based on their location, or send no notifications to a dashboard on new registrations, and many more such uh, use cases. For most of your needs, we have an action for you in a marketplace. And for the few times when there is no marketplace action available that solves your problem, you can write your own custom actions. 
and you can create your own custom action with our built-in editor. No need to host these yourself. We will host your custom code and scale it with the growth of your business. And if you think your custom action covers a common use case, you can even submit it into the marketplace for others to use. That's how we pay it back in our tech community. By the way, if you have been using rules and hooks to customize your authentication flow, it's time to migrate to Actions. Actions replace both rules and hooks and provide a more robust and friendly development environment for your customization. And you can find out how to do it with our documentation and guides using, of course, the QR code on the screen. Oh, that was quick. You can't take the picture. All right. Um, <laughs> but it's out there. If you have attended some of our other keynotes earlier, you might have heard that AI can help innovate as a company, right? And AI can also help make developers our lives easier. Ever hit a wall searching for perfect action to fit your unique use case in our marketplace? Well, that's about to change. As we are working on Actions Navigator with Okta AI, picture this. You just chat with a natural language interface, expressing your needs, and that's all. The AI dives deep, not only finding your match, but if there is none available, also scripting the foundational code of your custom action out of the box. No need to sweep through our rich documentation. I know we write a lot, right? Let's boost your productivity and help you get back to building your core application. Let's enter the future of coding together with Actions Navigator. And that's not all. We have more on the customization front. You know Okta's universal login page helps you build your login box? Well, it's already highly customizable. We took it a step further. Later this month, we will release custom prompts, a new capability that enables you to add new elements to the already existing authentication prompts. No need to shy away. Let's clap, of course. I love that. As you can see, we've been busy working to make your life easier in our authentication journey. And we have tons to share on the authorization journey, too, starting with our FGA product that we previewed last year. And to share more on authorization, I'd like to invite our president of the Customer Identity Cloud, Shivain Ramji. Thank you, Bhavna. It's me again. New outfit, same old me. <laughs> Here to serenade you with code with Okta AI. No, I'm kidding. That part is not true. Um, so thank you for joining us uh, for the developer keynote. Now, authentication and authorization are two concepts. They can be easily confused because, honestly, they kind of go hand in hand. And we already talked about the different ways a user can prove who they are, uh, which is authentication. Now let's discuss how you can implement a system where your users, the ones you authenticated, only see and do what they're supposed to. Let's discuss authorization. In the last decade, more and more apps have begun to emphasize the importance of privacy, compliance, collaboration, and sharing features. And these aspects have moved beyond identity. They've now become critical to the application's core functionality. Privacy decides what can be shared with whom. Compliance says who can access what and under what conditions. And then we all know sharing facilitates collaboration at work and at play. All of these have three things in common. Authorization connects them together. They, have, they all have high risk if done wrong. And this complexity is likely not core to your business. Authorization in most software systems is just messy. Because authorization logic is often mixed with code, and it's hard to make changes. And it's really hard to figure out who has access to what. So authorization is the next challenge for the identity industry. And Okta is here to help 
you solve the authorization problem much like we did with authentication over the last decade or 15 years. Today, authorization is a focus area for the big platforms. You know, companies like Airbnb, Carta, Google have all built extensive internal systems to implement authorization. But candidly, authorization is not their core business. But you know, they didn't have solutions. They are large platforms and companies. They had to invest in it. That's why we built Okta Fine Grain Authorization. Authorization is not part of your core business either, and you shouldn't have to spend time building this. We should. FGA enables you to define your authorization model, and we handle storing and surfacing the data to you when your app needs to make critical authorization decisions. You know, answering questions like who can do what and what documents can be accessed. Now, Okta's FGA is powered by OpenFGA, an open source project for fine grained authorization that applies the concept of relationship based access control. While we are the primary contributors and we started the project, it is now owned by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, or CNCF. OpenFGA was originally inspired by Google's, Google's Zanzibar paper, which describes how Google solved this problem internally. OpenFGA is a consistent and global authorization system for determining whether users are authorized to access specific resources. And we design OpenFGA for reliability and low latency at very, very high scale because we want to enable you to exercise granular access control using an easy-to-read modeling language and friendly APIs and SDKs. SDKs for OpenFGA currently supports popular programming languages like JavaScript, Go, .NET, Java, and Python. And we're working incredibly hard to bring more SDKs and tools in the future. And since we're all developers here, we invite you all to join us in building OpenFGA. Join the developers at companies such as Canonical and Walt that have already contributed to the development of OpenFGA. So let's build a common authorization platform together in the open. Now, Okta FGA is built upon OpenFGA, providing what you expect from a managed service. Okta great environment that can store billions of relationships, blazing fast data replication, and all of it backed by Okta, running this massive production critical distributed system at scale. To enable high availability, Okta FGA deploys across multiple regions, preventing service interruption if a region is not available. It also routes your API requests to the closest region to minimize read latency, meaning your user isn't waiting for your request to process. They get the data or the document that they want to get to super fast. One of the most exciting aspects of FGA is that you can start quickly and grow over time. FGA starts with basic rules that you can use for your application's entitlement management. And as your company and products grow, you can build more complex authorization models, adding granular sharing permissions and collaboration capabilities. You can use FGA to model authorization for any kind of application. It can be B2B, it can be B2C, Heck, it can even be an internal app, and you can still do that. Access and sharing is a universal expectation of users today, and we believe that FGA can benefit everyone. And because it's a centralized authorization service, you can standardize how you want to implement authorization for your company, improving developer velocity and raising the bar for how your entire company deals with authorization anywhere you use identity. But authorization is complex. Let's take a look at what FGA looks like in action. 
To give us a glimpse into FGA and its powerful capabilities, I'd like to invite Andres Aguiar, Group Product Manager for FGA, to show us. Thank you, Shiv. I love your business smart t-shirt, by the way. So to show you how FGA works, we'll be creating a B2B document management application where we can define teams with users and folders with documents. This application should enable different teams to, enable, uh, to access different folders. Users should be able to create folders and documents and share them. Pretty simple application. For example, one customer would, could want to define a sales team with an east and west regional teams. Jack could be a member of the global sales team. Ethan belonged to the east team. Wendy to the west team. They will have access to the team-specific folders, and Jack will have access to both folders. To implement authorization using FCA, we first need to define an authorization model where we create the entities that are relevant when making authorization decisions. In this case, users and teams. We are saying here that a team can have members that can be specific users or members from another team. In addition to the authorization model, FCA needs the data that it will use to instantiate that model and inform authorization decisions. The data is added in the form of relationship tables. We are now using the FCA dashboard to add the data that defines the relationships we want. We are saying that Jack is a member of the sales team, Ethan is a member of the Sales East team, Wendy a member of the Sales West team, and that all the members of the Sales team are members of the West team and of the East team. In a real world scenario, this data will be added by the application using the FCA API, or synchronized from a corporate directory uh, with Scheme, for example. The FCA dashboard is a tool for developers, not for end users. The application will then use the FCA API to list which users are members of each group and displaying UIs like the ones you see on the left side of the screen. Next, we'll be diving into the heart of our system. We'll define the permissions that users have on documents and folders. So far, our focus has been on modeling relationship between users. And now we're going to start adding different resource types and define how are they related between themselves and users. For these applications, the resources will be documents and folders. For folders, each folder can have a parent, which is another folder. There's an owner, typically the user who created the folder, and then we have viewers. These can be uh, individual users, entire teams. The owner or anyone has been defined as a viewer in the parent folder. Then we have documents, similar concept. Every document, we have a parent folder, an owner, viewers, which can be individual users or specific teams, the document owner or any viewer from any parent folder. So here is the authorization model for the resources. Let's now add the data that the application will add calling the FCA API when new folders and documents are created. We'll be creating a folder with a document per team and assigning team viewer permissions for each folder. In this case, we're defining that the Sales West folder is the parent of the Sales California document, that the Sales uh, East folder is the parent of the Sales New York document, and that members of the East team uh, are the viewers of the East folder, and the members of the West team can view the content of the West folder. When users navigate to their folders and documents using the application, Jack, who is the sales manager, will be able to see the content for all folders and documents. Wendy and Ethan will only be able to see the content for the regional team's folders. The model we define allowed us to specify any user as a viewer to any document. Because of that, Wendy will be able to share a document with Ethan by using this shared dialog. When that happens, the application will call the FCA API 
to our tuple saying that Ethan is a viewer for that document. When Ethan navigates to the documents, he'll see that this document was shared with him. You probably noticed that I've been referring to the FGA API without giving you much details. To integrate with FGA, we'll basically need to use two a a API calls. Write, we will let you create new tuples, add data to the system, and check, we will let you know if a user is related to the resource in a certain way. For example, if Wendy is a viewer of the Sales California document. There are two more, two API, two more uh, API endpoints, uh, but these are the most important two. That was all. Hopefully you got a grasp of how easy it is to model authorization with FCA. We barely scratch the surface of what the product can do, but you will be able to, ever, you will be able to learn more about FCA tomorrow. Back to you, Shit. Thank you, Andres. So hopefully you got a glimpse of how complex authorization is, but also how we're trying to solve it and the, and the, the power uh, that it can unleash for you. And you know, you know, about 10, 15 years ago, we believed that we could solve authentication for developers, and we've delivered. Now it is our time to solve authentication with Okta FGA. And you can apply to get early access today, and if you want to start getting your hands dirty with some code, you can try out the developer preview at fga.dev, where you can model your own authorization system using Okta FGA's dashboard. And I highly uh, encourage you to attend Andres' talk tomorrow, Next Generation Authorization, Implementing Okta FGA at Developer Day. As you can see, our innovation has led to the development of a modern authorization at scale. But we're not stopping there. The industry is moving fast, and we're always moving with it, trying out new things with up-and-coming standards and technologies. One of the things we see a huge potential in for our digital crypto cryptographically verifiable credentials. These are credentials that can be stored on digital devices, and you can use cryptography to verify their data and authorship. Think of any credential that you can prove your facts about you. So it could be maybe an ID card issued by a country or your driver's license to provide your age or address. Maybe your office badge that your company issues to grant you access to a building. What if you need to prove you have obtained a certain degree at a university because you're applying for a job? And what if you need to prove you have received the vaccine so that you're able to travel abroad? All these are potential use cases for verifiable credentials. We believe digital credential is going to be a big thing in the future of digital identity. And there are already standards from W3C for verifiable credentials and from ISO for mobile driver's licenses. Now, the challenge is that these are relatively new and can be complex to understand and implement. This is where we come in. We want to make it easy for you to work with any kind of verifiable credential, and we're working to make that happen. As I mentioned, mobile driver's licenses, or MDL, are cryptographically verifiable driver's licenses. As of today, there are some states that allow you to store your MDL in your Apple wallet so it can be presented in person. For example, at TSA when you're at the airport. Google is also working to support this as well, which means these credentials will start getting adoption everywhere. New standards are being developed to support presentation of these credentials remotely or over the web or over an app. That means that MDL can become a digital cryptographic credential that ties back to your real world identity. This has huge implications. Users will be able to use MDL to simplify know your customer or KYC processes, implement credential recovery mechanisms, and even sign in into applications. And as always, true to how we've operated and built our products, we want to make it easy to work with these mobile driver's licenses. Thus, we're working to support online MDL verification, 
which will be available next year. And you can sign up to get early access by using the QR code on this slide. But that's not all. We are thrilled to unveil our brand new site dedicated to developers to understand this spec, mdl.me. So you can dive deep into the heart of the MDL specification and play with hands-on dynamic examples. With MDL.me, you will learn how mobile driver's licenses are formatted, verified, and how all parties in the ecosystem work together. So dive in and expand your knowledge. Those were two exciting innovations that will impact your productivity. Now let's talk about our innovations in scalability so that we can keep up with your business's growth. I'd like to invite Bhavna back on the stage to talk about that. Wow, thanks, Shiv, and uh, thank you for talking about a lot of exciting updates on authorization. And did you pay attention to the scale numbers he talked about? There was a billion somewhere, a billion with a B. Did everybody pay attention? That's important. Very excited about those things. So along with these new features and impro improvements, the foundation of our, of our platform is critical in strengthening customer trust, which primarily focuses on being reliable, secure, and compliant. And we believe true customer trust is earned when we consistently meet our customers right where they are. So let's deep dive into developer productivity. This is all about making your work easier, more efficient, and more impactful. So I have a question for you. Name the company that had the fastest user base growth this year. Well, there's got to be more people who should know that answer. Right? Yes, OpenAI, the one company that grew the fastest and everyone is talking about. In fact, in the last multiple decades of internet space, we cannot recall a faster ramp in the user base of a consumer application. As a login provider for OpenAI, this meant we had to meet that growth rate. And behind the scenes story that I can tell you is that meeting that level of scale was not even on our roadmap. But meeting our customers where they need us to is part of our value. The high scale capacity required us to apply architectural changes and to tell you the story of this scale journey. Let me invite our chief architect for customer identity, Mark Walker. Thank you for joining, Mark. Glad to be here. Are you ready to share about this hyperscale journey with OpenAI as our customer? Yeah, absolutely. So, Bhavna, the fun thing about this story is just how fast it happened. When OpenAI introduced ChatGPT, it was a smash hit. They quickly accumulated millions of users. When a customer goes viral, that means we have to go viral with them. So to accommodate OpenAI's growth, we needed to move fast to upgrade our capacity. So over six months, we upgraded the largest cloud environments to handle over six and a half times the amount of requests per second and raise that limit from 1,500 to 10,000. So, Bhavna, please join us tomorrow for our deeper dive into how we accomplish this feat of engineering with our talk, Scale, Resilience, and Efficiency, Pick 3 as All part three. of our developer. I don't, I don't need to pick two. You don't have to this pick two. This is the first time he's, he's allowing me to, he's giving me a choice without a choice. <laughs> Well, that's right. We've not only managed to improve the scale of the platform that, can, that it can handle, but we've also made numerous improvements to make it more resilient and efficient. High scale for us doesn't mean just scale. It means scale, resilience, and efficiency all at once. You don't have to choose. Perfect. And by the way, we're already working on doubling that 10,000 requests per second limit again. My uh, God, I expect nothing less from you, Mark. But I also can't wait into the deep dive tomorrow. I hope you all will join uh, there today. But we have audience here today itself. So why don't we share at least one learning that you will talk about tomorrow um, with the, our audience today. Well, Bhavna, for modern developers, it's never just about one thing, I right? Bet. So, you know, for modern developers, as a developer, you might get asked to take your software to a higher scale, but nobody's going to be happy if you let reliability slip or if the costs go through the roof, right? 
Even if you could, modern distributed systems have a huge surface area. How do you even know where to start scaling all those interacting components under the hood? Well, we're going to give you our strategy. Distributed systems are more than some of their parts, so why not use that to your advantage? We'll explain how we flip the perspective from seeing scale, resilience, and efficiency as competing priorities for our developers to seeing them as a tool for knowing where to get the most from our work. Then we're going to dive deep into a case study of how we applied that strategy to our extensibility platform that underpins Actions, which many of you in the audience are probably using today. We'll look at re introducing redundant request routing, changing load balancing algorithms from round robin to consistent hashing, and rolling it all out with a red-black deployment model while maintaining a 0% error rate during those deployments. Plus, we'll touch on some examples of other improvements, like CDC streams and logging, picking the right database for the job. It's going to be fun. Hope to see you there. Oh, I'm sure it will be fun, and I can't wait to see you on the stage, Mark. Thank you. And this time, the QR code was on the screen for quite some time, so I hope you all know which session to go tomorrow for sure. And of course, you're welcome for all the sessions Thursday uh, at the Intercontinental. So it's been, such a, uh, it's been certainly a challenging journey for us at the scale, and of course, a fun journey and with tons of learning. We know that delivering on customer trust is a must, and so is ensuring our customers' delight, right? Auth0 always has been built with developers in mind, and we continue that journey with Okta now. Our developers experience team is always looking for ways to improve the way developers interact with our dashboard. From simple things like adding dark mode to our dashboard, which we know some of you love, uh, to a simplified onboarding experience. This new onboarding flow makes it even easier to set up your first tenant and get started with securing your application. We know developers love to work within the tools they use daily, their favorite code editor and terminal, and that's why we offer a whole array of tools that help them use our product without the need to navigate to the dashboard. Think of our VS Code or CLI, for example. You can access all functionality from the dashboard through our management API and do most of the work through your own scripts run automated tasks on the CLI, or configure the customer identity cloud tenant with infrastructure as a code using our Terraform provider. And of course, our SDKs make sure your application can connect to their tenant in a secure and easy way. And with our 58 different SDKs and libraries, chances are we have one that works for you. As you can see, every facet of what we create is designed with you in mind ensuring your journey with us is as seamless as possible. Whether it's getting you started, help you integrate with our universal login into your application, or provide you with the tools to configure every feature we offer. Our developer experience team is always dedicated to making your life easier and enhancing your experience. But that's not it. This year, we are, bringing on, we are working on bringing two clouds together so that we can leverage their combined power to create seamless experiences for customer identity cloud SaaS builders and workforce identity cloud enterprises. Yes, why not? As a SaaS builder, you want quality exposure of your product to potential clients, and we can help with that by allowing you to quickly make your application available on all Okta Works, workforce customers. We are the Okta Integration Network, OIN. The OIN is a catalog of integrations that enterprises use to give their workforce seamless access to the technology they need. Having your application listed here will allow you to reach thousands of potential enterprises. But, that doesn't end, but it doesn't end here. Because you're using customer identity for your SaaS app, as we add capabilities to Customer Identity Cloud, your customers using Okta Workforce Identity Cloud will get features like provisioning, governance, and risk signaling without you having to write or maintain a single line of code. I'm really excited about this, as it is something that only Okta is positioned to do. And, the, and it showcases the power of our two identity clouds. Today, we have talked about many things, many innovative features that Okta is putting at the fingertips of every developer, at your fingertips, and to help you build successful application. As we have seen, integrating customer identity cloud 
into an application is not just a matter of adding a login box. The login box is the tip of the iceberg, the entry point into the application. It's the visible part of your user's identity protection and authorization. But as a developer, you know there is so much more to that. As you, your needs for security, usability, extensibility, scalability, and uh, grow, you see the hidden parts of all of these abilities, uh, and, and you, know, you start to see the hidden part of the iceberg. Okta has, has and will continue to invest heavily in the making the lives of your application users safer and easier. Passkey is a clear example. But we don't forget that you, the developers, are behind the creation of every application. And making it easier for you to build secure application is a prereq for making the, the, the life of you easier and for your, for your end users as well. To wrap up, we saw how actions and custom prompts make customer identity ad, uh, adaptable for your needs, for customizing login, registration, and other flows. We learned how FGA makes it easy to manage authorization. Don't forget, there was a billion B. We shared the experience of scaling our platform and match the pace of your application growth. But what we have started, what we have shared in this keynote is just a glimpse. There's so much more out there that we are working on. So prepare for a deep dive tomorrow, right next door at the Intercontinental, with over 10 insightful sessions, three hands-on labs, and of course, countless opportunities to engage with our experts and peers. It is an event you don't want to miss. And I can't wait to see you all there to continue this exciting journey on safeguarding your users' digital identities. Also, don't hesitate to explore the customer identity cloud features and use them in your application. With this QR code, you can get a free account. And remember, there's way more beyond the login box. See you at Developer Day tomorrow. Enjoy your time. <laughs>